Welcome again to another A session, live from New Jersey. We are going to draw constitutional isomers for these three molecular formulas, C5H12, C5H10, C3H9N. I still don't have my headset, I still don't have my document camera, and we are going to do this under 19 minutes. In a previous video, I went over some rules of thumb, and those are listed down here. There are six of them. I'm not going to go over them here. I will put the link for that video in the description. Let's get started. C5H12. We want to start out with the simplest molecule you can think of that has five carbons. That's five carbons in a row. C5H12. That's pentane. Now, there are no other molecules that have five carbons in a row that is not pentane. Okay, five carbons in a row and 12 hydrogens. Oh, let's verify. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Now, there should be several butanes that can fit this molecular formula. What do I mean by that? I thought five was pentane. Well, if you have butane, that means you could have a fifth carbon as a branch. So that is 2-methylbutane, and it does fit C5H12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. All the guesses you should be making for this molecule should be all single bonds. If you put a double bond or a ring, you're going to lose two hydrogens. This molecule is fully saturated. As many hydrogens as possible. On a molecule with only five carbons. Now, I can't put the methyl group, let's get back to butane. I can't put the fifth carbon over here because it would be the same molecule as this. So, not only do you want to be good at drawing line structures and counting hydrogens, you have to be good at finding structures that are identical so you don't start drawing redundant structures. That's it for the Butanes. What about the propanes? What about three carbons in a row? When you have three carbons in a row, you need to put in the fifth and the sixth carbon. You can't go on the ends because you'll start repeating molecules you've drawn previously. You have to put them both in the middle, like that. That's it. There are only three constitutional isomers that have the molecular formula C5H12. C5H12. And let me get that circled and off to the side. The sixth rule of thumb from the previous video says that you cannot predict how many constitutional isomers you have from the molecular formula. I wish there was a formula, but there isn't. Take a look at this. I still have C5, but now I go down to 10 hydrogens. So I know it can't be this, right? But to reduce down to 10 hydrogens, I need to lose two hydrogens. One of the rules, or one of the tricks, is to add a double bond or, in general, a pi bond. Okay, let us get started with the C5H10s. It's pretty interesting. We have less hydrogens, but we are going to definitely have more constitutional isomers. So look at the trick I'm using. I'm taking advantage of my cutting and pasting. And I'm going to take that template of five carbons in a row. Oh, by the way, I'm going to save these guys. I'm going to use them in just a bit. But Five carbons in a row, that has 12 hydrogens. I'm going to put a double bond right here. Count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And now, we can shift the double bond to carbon 2 and 3. And we have that. Okay. Um, can we shift the double bond again? And get these out of the way. Well, no. Because if you shift it again to the right, we are going to end up having 
the same molecules as this. You just have to turn this over like a pancake to get this molecule here. Credit for that phrase goes to an SI student instructor. Uh, she taught me to flip it like a pancake to distinguish it from chair flipping. Those of you who have, who have done cyclohexane chair flipping. Anyway, that's it. So you notice that with C5H12, we have five carbs in a row, and that exhausts all the pentanes. But here, we could have two molecules that have five carbs in a row that are constitutional isomers. All right. Um, one more aside, those of you who are very good with alkenes, you know you could put the ethyl group downwards, and that would be a different molecule, but that would be a stereoisomer of um, you would have two stereoisomers if you drew this with a this would not be valid because we're only looking at constitutional isomers and it would not be valid if you had drawn this as well. Either draw this one on the left or this one on the right, but not both, because these two are stereoisomers of each other. Alright. Subtle point, but very important. You don't want any point deduction for drawing a molecule that's in stereoisomer rather than a constitutional isomer. Look at my four carbon template, the methyl group hanging off on carbon number two. We know that that is C5H12. To get it down to C10, start putting double bonds. There. Where else can we put it? I'm not going to put a double bond here because it would be a repeat of this molecule. If you don't understand that, you should be working with your model to understand that this bond can rotate and that double bond can now exist up here. So the second four carbon chain molecule would be this one, double bond between two and three. And then another one between three and four. I wonder what's faster actually. Uh, chem draw or drawing by hand. You can cut and paste, but also I'm trying to align them a little bit better. All right. So now, what is interesting is that we have this as one of the isomers for C5H12, one of the constitutional isomers. And the trick before was to add a double bond original set of molecules. But you notice here, if you add a double bond, you will get a bad structure, a carbon that has five bonds. And I'm going to keep that mistake. I'm going to leave it in red. And right now, those are our, are our constitutional isomers for C5H10. The thing is, whenever you have a molecule that has a double bond, you could have the same number of hydrogens by removing that double bond and making a ring. Take a look at cyclopentane. Okay. Count on the top. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So the idea is if you, from your fully saturated version, need to lose two hydrogens, either put a double bond or make it a ring. You have four membered rings. When you have a four membered ring, that means you have a fifth carbon hanging off of one of these vertices. And it doesn't matter which one, they would all be the same. We've exhausted all the possibilities where we have a four membered ring. What about a three membered ring? Okay. We have to take care of carbon four and five. And we could do this. I'll do one that some people miss. <clears throat> Any ears? Okay. Actually, pause the video now. I will tell you that there are two constitutional isomers, and they're both cyclic. Can you get those? Pause the video and see if you get those. And if you have to, then unpause it. Okay. The next one is this. I would draw is a 
two methyl groups on different carbons. Okay. There's one more, and it's one that people tend to miss. And you figure it out. The last one, I think it's the last one. If you know another one, let me know in the comments. Is ah, it doesn't have to be methyl, the two carbons can be ethyl, all right. And I haven't counted car uh, hydrogens in a bit. Let me do that for this last molecule one, two, three, four, five, <clears throat> six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, let me put a box around those. We have five. Acyclic and five cyclic. I believe that's all of them. And again, this one was a test, but we noticed that it failed, so it's in red. Last one C3H9 N. Okay, start again with the fully saturated all single bonds, and let's put all of them in a row. In this order carbon, 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 nitrogen. Nitrogen with one bond to carbon needs two more bonds. This nitrogen in the neutral state has three bonds and one lone pair. Why the neutral state? Because there are no charges in any of these molecular formulas. There's no plus or minus superscript. So you assume that every atom is going to be neutral. Now there are exceptions, but we're not going to see those exceptions here. Let's count hydrogens. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. Let me actually write out C3H9N. And make it look pretty. In this example, C5H10, we had put in a double bond and we started walking that group down the molecule. We don't have a double bond, but we have an NH2 group. That is called an amino group. Let's walk it to the left on this three carbon chain. Put it right here. You notice how confident I am, how confident I am that we have the right number of hydrogens because we have the right number of carbons the right number of nitrogens, and everything singly bonded. The hydrogen count should be identical in those two molecules. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Um, now, what's interesting about nitrogen is that you could put it in between two carbons. Let me show you that example. So get rid of the one at the end and put nitrogen right here. It needs a hydrogen, so it has three bonds, and that should have nine hydrogens. Three, four, five, six, seventy-nine. Mm -hmm. Are there any other possibilities? Well, no, we have this in a row, carbon, nitrogen, carbon, carbon. What if we make a branch? Off of the nitrogen. Have this. I think that might be it. Nine hydrogens here. You notice that I am not testing any cyclic structures because I know that if I add a cyclic structure, I'm going to go down now to H7. I'm not putting any double bonds because I would have H7 again. And actually, in that first video on constitutional isomers, an A session, I did C3H7N. And there were a lot more constitutional isomers than just four that we have here. I think there are four. I don't know for sure, but if this is one, if this was on, the, on an exam, I would stop here. Okay. I could pretty much guarantee you that there are only four. Right. Okay. The idea here is to practice, give it a day, and then go ahead and do these three without the video and see if you could get the same number of constitutional isomers as I do. If you get more, you want to double check whether 
you have a redundant structure or if you drew a stereo isomer. Um, it's called, like for the alkenes, you'll have what's called cis-trans stereo isomerism. You can't draw stereo isomers because the question is, can you draw all the constitutional isomers? Differences in connectivity. Okay. Again, practice, practice, practice. This will start to get fast for you. Don't worry. But you need to do more examples.